Hi, I'm HBK and you're watching The Clever References. Hey guys, Ash here from The Clever References here with another episode of Muso Chatter. Uh, so, uh, first things first, this episode of Muso Chatter is brought to you by The Clever References release Tell Ben Kate. Uh, it's been going well. We have like 2,000 monthly listeners on Spotify, which is crazy. But yeah, sponsored by that, please check us out over there. And here, here uh, we have an episode of Muso Chatter with the brilliant singer-songwriter HPK. We shot this episode like a couple of months ago at Bendigo Hotel, and here he is. Hey, how are you? Good, alright, how are you doing? Cool, I'm good, I'm good. Uh, so, introduce yourself. I'm HBK. Wow. So, yeah. Just three letters? Just three letters, yeah. So, my full name is Henry Prendigas Kruger, so just... Yeah, I, yeah. I, I originally stole the first three letters. <laughs> there, so. Sure. Okay, well. So, um, how did you start, like, uh, songwriting for yourself? Uh, songwriting, I sort of just started. I don't... I, I, I probably can't tell you the first song I wrote, if I'm honest. Um, it was most likely very, very shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, look, uh, I think I think about maybe year seven or eight, I was playing, pick up the guitar and singing a lot. I've been singing for yonks and just um, really inspired by a lot of people and wanted to express my art in my own way and getting through songwriting was a way to do that and, yeah, came through. Right, right, right. Uh, did you start out in like in grade school or was it later? Um, so I've been in terms of singing. Yeah. I, I started out maybe you know year year three sort of stuff, just in choirs and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, in terms of the guitar, maybe year seven or eight, I started right. to pick that up. And <clears throat> first time picking it was year seven and eight. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. That became a big part of what I did later. It's just like because I was doing a lot of singing and needed something harmonically to go with that and help me write music so right. the guitar seemed like the obvious choice yeah in terms of songwriting probably didn't get into it until maybe year nine was probably cool. when I started you know heavily songwriting but uh, yeah not, probably nothing good came out till <laughs> year 10 I'd say that yeah around there um was your family like like particularly musical did your father um oh not not, not my immediate family particularly my mum's side is very musical I'm yeah going, um, a couple of couple of full time musos on that side of the right. family, and um, a lot of people who are very very well trained operatically and stuff like that. So what so like proper singing? Like, yeah, yeah like proper proper real proper real stuff. Real, real stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're just we're just we're just shouting right here. Oh right? yeah, man, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. Um, ever um, ever try and do like the opera stuff? Or uh, not particularly. Look, uh, when when I sing in choirs and stuff like that, it's, yeah, it's all yeah, classical yeah. tone, so yeah. you have to be really straight about what you do. Mm-hmm. But in terms of what I do outside that, I don't don't really use them. Sure, 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 sure. Nice. Um, so you mentioned you started guitar at seven as an outlet, like harmonically or whatever. Yeah. Was that encouraged by like your like school, or was there a band there? Um, or? Well, there was a guitar teacher at the school. I wouldn't yeah. say it was. Like, encouraged necessarily or anything like that I just um there were year 7 and 8 band programs and stuff like that so I did um play the trumpet and stuff like that but trumpet doesn't really help when you want to sing no that's not really good because you have to blow and you have to sing and we didn't have a piano sitting at home at that stage so I bought a cheap guitar right 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 right. so like you mentioned that you couldn't remember what your first song is because it's probably shit that's your own words oh yeah yeah which was the first song you had the nerve to actually perform to other people? Oh, I performed plenty of the shit ones. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they definitely got played to a bunch of people who are forced to erase from their memories. Oh, no! The first one I thought was maybe worth playing to anyone is the first song off the EP, which is Illusion. Right, right, so right. That, which can be found on Spotify. Yeah, for Spotify, yeah, yeah, yeah. all that sort of jazz. But, um... Yeah, that, that was probably the first song I got through that I thought was worth maybe playing to anyone or yeah. worth putting on an EP or ever releasing or anything like that. But, yeah. yeah. Um, sorry to get like a bit, a bit uh, mad out with the question, but like, what makes Illusion worth it where your previous songs was not? Um, In your own words, it's, it's, your, it's how you're feeling. It's just better written. It's just better written. Yeah. Um, the... I, th- I think it's it's just to stick with. I don't think anyone's born as a natural lyricist. Some are definitely born better than others. We'll, we'll admit to that. But 
it's it's just a practice thing, I think, and I just had to get through enough songs for that to come out, I guess, and it's probably the first song I wrote where there was some actual competent guitar stuff going on as well. It wasn't just chords, we had some some funky open tuning stuff. Right, was, right, 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 right. You did actually an open tuning just now for yes. like the final song. Yeah, that was that was delusion. Was the was it open D? Open D. Open D, sorry yeah. mate. So like do you experiment with alternate tunics? Do you experiment with alternate tunings a lot, or um, is it? I wouldn't say heaps. Um, yeah, I love John Butler, so a lot of the stuff I have learnt but don't play very much is in Open C. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I've got I've got a few tunes in it, so I you know I do Dad Gad tuning a bit and Open D, but yeah, I don't stray no, no. too far very much from. Uh, yeah, of, of songs I play on a set list, I maybe two or three would be in different tunings. Right, right, right. All right. Um, like as a guitarist myself, like um, open tuning is kind of sort of at least for me how I do it is like when you're stuck in a rut and you can't really there's no th- nothing coming out. <laughs> you kind of go to an open tuning and like oh my god I'm storming a chord sounds beautiful already. Yeah. But uh, do you use open tunings as kind of sort of an unlock when you can't do anything in standard tuning or sometimes you yeah I think this is a dad cat song. Um. Sometimes it'll definitely feel like a dad gets song. If it's got a real bluesy feel or anything like that, yeah. then you sort of have to. I, I, I naturally go down that path. Yeah, I wouldn't. So I would, you, so you know what you're using it for, essentially. I think so. I think of, it's also more of an experimentation thing. Yeah. Because like as soon as you, as soon as you get in open tuning, you're sort of forced to think about the guitar very, very differently. Yeah. Than you are in open. So it's yeah. Like, Oh, what is this instrument I just picked up? <laughs> yeah, yeah. All of the knowledge I have is useless. How do I get around this and make it right, 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 cool right, right, for, right, this, right, right. for this setting? Yeah. You mentioned John Butler. Yeah. Um, like, what other influences that you have? Um, would, you, I think John John Mayer would be a big one. Yeah. Is a big one of mine. Uh, people like Dadiri and Josh Pike and Pete Murray. Yeah, all yeah, these, yeah, yeah, yeah. All these acoustic artists that like have the ability to play in a band setting and you know go, go electric and um, yeah be able to reshape their songs to work in that setting are the exactly. people I, yeah, I, I yeah, really yeah. like for yeah. sure for sure is that the kind of sort of uh, <laughs> mentality that you're bringing into like the full band stuff I've uh, just as a record <laughs> I haven't heard the full band stuff this is the first time of me meeting HBK so I haven't actually listened to the music um, other than the stuff you performed just now I'd say it varies from song to song. Yeah. With certain songs, I come in and I'm doing nothing differently. I'm yeah. playing the tune and my bandmates are intelligent enough to find something around it to right. work in a band setting. Yeah. Some songs I've written specifically for a band setting. Right. So, uh, for instance, the next single I'm probably going to release, I'll never play acoustically because it doesn't work and it's a full electric. Right, 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 right. But it's sort of something that I wrote with, you know, this is something that I'll play in a band context and nice finger-picky acoustic tunes or something yeah. I'll say for my solo sense sort of thing. for sure for sure so uh, did you feel like your songwriter kind of, songwriter did you feel like your songwriting kind of changed when you kind of sort of started jamming with the band or you know it's just the same no I don't think so yeah. I think um, I think I very much separate the songwriting process from the band process like, right, right. unless the song's exactly how it is uh, is going to be in my head yeah. before I bring it to the band then the yeah, band yeah. doesn't hear it because right. otherwise it's, I think it's cheating <laughs> it's, it's sort of asking my band members to save me in a bit in yeah. terms of a songwriter and I think it's, it's okay. just lazy songwriting <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Yeah. so uh, but you did mention that uh, so you're bringing the song here as a song and then you let your bandmates kind of sort of ar- arrange from their position yeah like they're not going to do anything that I'm not that I'm not thinking because you know it's it's fairly self-explanatory. Yeah, yeah, with yeah, the yeah, yeah, and yeah. My voice and for they, sure. They're not gonna anything they bring is not gonna change the song drastically in any right, way. Right, 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 right. If I made it specifically for a band setting, then I'll be much more clear about what I want them to. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so you have the EP on Spotify right now. Yes. Are you writing and recording something new? Yeah. So um, in the near uh, future? Yeah. Just re- finish re- re- recording my next single. Finish recording your next yeah. single. Cool. So cool. It's cool. All done. Like uploaded and all that sort of stuff. So right, it's right, right, right. somewhere in mid Jan. We're looking up. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Nice. All right. So um, thank you for the interview. Thank you very much. Uh, and here is HPK with a live performance that I just recorded just now. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah.
Most you degenerates know the worst this next one is. <laughs> Thank you.